Sleek, powerful, relentless, the Midnight Express pursues its prey. These men are at the front line of a war that will never end, chasing an enemy lurking in the shadows. Not what the United States calls the war on terror, but its war on drugs. Massive amounts of marijuana are being smuggled into the United States from Canada. The suspicious boat is stopped and boarded. But everything checks out. On this boat at least, many others are caught carrying cannabis. Well, they'll make it through 20 times and we'll catch them once. We just can't be, in a, be everywhere at one time around here. So we just, we stretch ourselves pretty thin. We work uh, as many hours as we can. Uh, we're out here as much as we can. That's all we can do. So yeah, I guess sometimes we are plugging the dike. The waters of the Pacific Northwest are now a key battlefield in the drug war, the place where the United States meets Canada and a hard-line attitude to marijuana chafes against a liberal one. The drug is known as BC Bud, a particularly potent form of marijuana grown in British Columbia. Marijuana is now Canada's most valuable agricultural product, three times bigger than the top legal crop, wheat. And increasingly, it's an export industry. In the province of British Columbia alone, the BC Bud business is worth $7 billion a year. It's not legal, but the laws are loosely enforced. Marijuana tourism is booming in Canada. There's even a cannabis crawl. The Magic Bus visits specialised cannabis cafes where customers smoke to their lungs' content. It's a very different approach to the war on drugs. The United States, to me, operates like not only a bully, but it's sort of an abusive relationship. Like if you look at Canada, like the female or the woman, and you look at the relationship with the macho US trying to dominate, you know, and the Canada being kind of like, oh, well, you know, I, I really don't want that, but, uh, well, you okay? Or, or you know, when she, when she stands up for herself, the US gets kind of mad, like, they kind of backlash, no, oh, I'm gonna be angry at you, and it's like this, this, like, dysfunctional relationship. <laughs> Vancouver is Canada's cannabis capital, a city overrun by weed. Even on a miserable Sunday morning, BC Bud is being sold and smoked just metres from a major police station. The marijuana is produced in private homes, grow ops as they're called. The police estimate there are 20,000 grow ops in British Columbia. It's early morning, and the BC bud grower is about to get a very rude awakening. The grow busters are paying a visit. They're officers with the Vancouver police. Anybody that comes out of the back, they're under arrest. Handcuff and put them on the ground. They've busted nearly 2,000 grow ops, but there's no room for complacency. Main floor is clear, we're going to the basement. Last year, four Mounties were shot dead during a marijuana raid. 
The Growbusters never know what's on the other side of the door. A gun, a booby trap, a child. This is a grow room where they're actually growing the plants. The one thing they nearly always find is marijuana. It's a growth industry. In this house, there are 800 plants. All they want is the bud, right? So this is the bud. They don't want the leaves, they don't want the stalk. All they want is this, and they dry it. And that's your BC bud. The smell, heat and humidity are overwhelming and toxic. The room is full of carbon dioxide pumped in to help the plants grow. It's a clearly professional operation. The growers have bypassed the electricity meter, stealing the power. Organised crime has moved into the marijuana business in a big way. The head of the Mounties drug unit says Vietnamese and bikey gangs are prominent players. So we're not talking about uh, peace-loving hippies that are involved in this. In many cases, it's, uh, it's career criminals. These are people that, uh, that whose only occupation is to, is to be involved in this sort of activities. It seems like the nation has been captured by this story and... Uh, the man with the giant joint is Mark Emery. Canada's Prince of Pot. I've finally gotten around to doing a new Pot TV Prince of Pot show here on the new streaming and downloading Pot TV. I've just returned from... He operates a marijuana media empire, producing glossy magazines and internet television shows. The DEA has been completely thwarted once again. The Canadians assumed a prominent role in the war on drugs as an insurgent fighting the American Narcotics Police, the Drug Enforcement Agency, or DEA. Depending on your perspective, he's outspoken, outrageous, or out of control. My philosophy was that I would sell as many seeds and hopefully uh, have people plant more marijuana than the DEA and all the other associated police agencies around the world could destroy in the same time. So that one person, myself, would literally be able to neuter an organization with billions of dollars, thousands of agents, police officers everywhere. At one time, Mark Emery's mail order seed business had 150,000 customers. We have to try and use that in an article since we're trying to get spring planting. That's great. Is that he made millions and ploughed the money into pro marijuana causes, pushing for legalization, funding political parties, court challenges, and referenda around the world. Oh, that's lovely too. And that blue on the background is really nice there. What, six joints at once? Six joints. <laughs> in Canada, he's made progress. They call it de facto decriminalisation. The air can be thick with marijuana smoke and the police will hardly bat an eyelid, preferring to focus on the growers. We're in. But even they get off lightly. The police only bust one third of the grow ops they know about. Come on downstairs. Body upstairs. Come on now with your hands up. Let's see you. Come on. The grow busters find a woman in a bedroom. She says she didn't know there were hundreds of plants in her basement. Put your hands behind your back. we got a female in the house. We're taking her into custody now. The police eventually let her go, well aware that if they don't, the courts will. Half the marijuana busts end like this, without any charges. Most growers, certainly on a first offence, will not be going to jail. Uh, they will need a number of, uh, of convictions before they, uh, they ever see the, uh, the inside of a, a jail cell. and, and uh, uh, in many cases, they'll be back out on the street before investigators are off shifts. Some Canadian politicians want to go even further. The Senate committees recommended that marijuana be completely legalized and treated like alcohol. Already it is legal for some people. Cam Cavaco has multiple sclerosis. You're uh, a constant gardener, if you will, you know. This is his medicine cabinet. He has the license to grow and smoke marijuana. There are timers, there are valves, uh, so the, the water is flushed and cleaned and replenished once a week. Nutrients are also added and, and combined then as well. 20 years ago, he was a Mountie, routinely busting people with marijuana. Now, he smokes up to 20 joints a day, saying it's the only way to stop the spasms. Without it, I would have a very different quality of life. Let's say um, I jitter a lot, almost like a Parkinson's, it's a spasticity, and it makes it very difficult to grab something. I mean, I couldn't do uh, little tasks like that. I couldn't hold this um, conversation with you if it weren't for it. 
but I just wouldn't be able to to concentrate to you know to have a, a constructive conversation discussion with you yeah back when you were a police officer a Mountie did it ever occur to you that one day you'd be using ma marijuana like this <laughs> no I um, no I, I mean it geez uh, you know I, the irony is not lost on me <laughs> you can appreciate you know after maybe a year or two or long before that the novelty wears off and uh, you know it's no longer fun to get high but unfortunately my symptoms don't take a day off or a week off so unfortunately you know I have to keep smoking it Canada was the first country to introduce a federal medical marijuana program many of the participants defy the pothead stereotype Nancy Percy is a grandmother who likes nothing better than baking cookies with her husband. Marijuana cookies. <laughs> no, we're not exactly entering them into any kind of a baking contest, that's for sure. My meds. The government allows people to use marijuana if they obtain a special doctor's certificate. Nancy Percy had little trouble doing that. She suffers from chronic back pain, the result of a car crash. Oh, they smell good. Grandmother never smoked marijuana before the accident, but now she considers it a wonder drug. When you're dealing with the chronic pain, frequently dealing with major financial stresses because you can't work and so on, it's tough. It's very, very tough. And the cannabis helps. It really does. But there are mainstream medicines. Why can't you take those? Don't I wish. I'm a little tired of that one. They give you meds which cause side effects, so they can give you the meds to counter those side effects, which cause other side effects, so then you get to take the meds to counter the side effects of the meds for the side effects for the original meds. Sure, uh, it is much easier for me to inhale a half a cookie an hour and a half before bedtime than to be doing the chasing the pills. What do you do when your options are limited? For a stupid plant that, <sighs> You know, literally grows like a weed and really doesn't cost all that much to produce. There are more than 1,000 official medical marijuana users in Canada. Some patients get their drug directly from the government, but like many others, Nancy Percy prefers to use a remarkable establishment, the Compassion Club. One of the biggest and oldest Compassion Clubs is on Vancouver Island. It's an appropriate location laid back, relaxed. So uh, today uh, we we got lots of triple A's, but uh, there's the uh, Kush or the grapefruit. The Cannabis Buyers Club has been operating for a decade, regularly providing marijuana to nearly 2,000 people. How is the grapefruit? Uh, very good. Looks great. Right. 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 Yeah, it's great. It doesn't just sell different strains of cannabis. This is marijuana merchandising on a grand scale. I'd say that these three are more of the strong ones. Definitely Durbella and Time Warp are really good. Uh, what's more smokeable? That's awesome. Oh, the Time Warp has been awesome. All right. Cannabis is an anti-inflammatory, smooth muscle relaxant, antibiotic, antifungal, antioxidant, anti-carcinogenic, and a painkiller. We've got uh, a massage oil. This is our regular massage oil. The club stocks hash cookies, cannabis massage oil, even marijuana lip balms and ointments. For burns, the, the, the sob is the best thing that I've ever seen. It, it kills the pain, it keeps it from getting infected, and regenerates the skin back to normal. The rationale for clubs like this is medical but the drug is treated lovingly, praised with a religious fervor. It is a miracle. I wouldn't be out of my bed if it wasn't that I was able to get caught. The anointing oil that Jesus used when he would go and heal the lepers, as they were, were called, was in fact this oil that the priests were using privately that they wouldn't allow the general public to use. Are you suggesting that oil contain cannabis? Oh, I, I'm suggesting that for sure. There's lots of evidence to, to prove that. Is that in the Bible? Um, well, uh, it's being debated for sure. Can I get a 
Thank you. Thank nice you. to see you as always, man. Have a good day. Soon, Canada will start distributing medical marijuana through pharmacies, drug stores in name and nature. The program will be more tightly controlled than the compassion clubs, where the potential for abuse is obvious. If they've fooled the doctor somehow into you know, the idea that their back hurts so much uh, that, that they need uh, uh, this diagnosis for whatever reason, um, then uh, that's you know, something beyond our control. Lots of doctors get scammed for prescription drugs uh, of all sorts. He started smoking pot when he was like... Across the border, American officials are worried. Like some other guys, and he, he didn't go to jail. Dave Murray is the White House deputy drug czar. He develops policy and runs confronting media campaigns. Even though some US states have medical marijuana programs, he says marijuana is not medicine. That's the issue of the 19th century traveling medicine show. The patent medicine, the snake oil salesman, these things were filled with alcohol, laudanum, morphine. I mean, it was, hey, I felt better, indeed. But you also developed dependency, and you did not get better in terms of the medical condition. But there are people who get genuine relief by using marijuana, people who have got multiple sclerosis or, or chronic pain, or are you saying that, that all the users are just using it as an excuse to get stoned? All of the above. Uh, there is clearly a legalization movement that's made a calculated decision that the way to get the camel's nose under the tent is to say it's a medicine, it's a magic herb, it's special, it should be a medical necessity claim, it should be for suffering patients, they love the optics, they love the political theater, people climbing out of wheelchairs and saying I've got to have my medicine that makes me, it's the only thing that will save me, it's kept me alive. No, this is heartstrings and this is effective political theater, but it's a little bit of a of a fraud. Dave Murray says BC Bud is some of the most potent pot in the world. He says Canadian growers use cloning and cultivation techniques to make marijuana that's up to 20 times more powerful than the stuff that was available in the 60s and 70s. We've seen over 30% potency. That's a whammel. I mean, that's not just kitty dope and a goof and then go eat some potato chips because you got the munchies. This is a powerful drug. And studies have linked the drug to depression and schizophrenia although there's still debate about whether one directly causes the other. Either way, marijuana is in the firing line. The Americans have a special police force that deals just with drugs. Between them, DEA officers like these and the regular police arrest far more people in the US for marijuana than for any other drug. More than 2,000 a day, the vast majority for possession. It reflects marijuana's status as the most common illegal drug and Washington's war on it. There's a lot at stake. Billions of dollars of goods cross the border every day. Senior US officials are threatening more stringent border checks if Canada legalizes marijuana, a move that would impede Canada's access to its most important trading partner. How's it going? Good. Citizenship. Canadian. The purpose of your trip today? Um, the Canadians talked about, well, our grows are mom and pop organizations. We're up here trying to make a living. We've got timber, we got hockey, we got some tourism. Here's another thing we can bring in. We'll grow a little marijuana uh, back in the, in, the, uh, in the greenhouse. That was swiftly shattered as criminal gangs muscled their way in. It's a multi-billion dollar industry in British Columbia, the export business of high potency marijuana, now going worldwide. The US is willing to fight the battle on both sides of the border, as Mark Emery's discovered. So our next court date's February 13th. I will let you know at that time what's happening. And Toronto, you rock. His seed business was not an underground operation. The Prince of Pot paid taxes, writing marijuana seed vendor on his returns and for 10 years he touted his work in the media. The Canadian authorities turned a blind eye, the Americans didn't. The raid was conducted by the local police at the behest of the American DEA. They go against the Canadian public and they work for the United States of America. They don't, they don't work for the citizens of British Columbia, Vancouver, the mayor, anything like that. They're their own force that works for the United States of America, the world's greatest terrorist nation, and the perpetuator of the war on the world's most useful plant, cannabis sativa, hemp. Emery and two associates were arrested. These guys are working for the United States. 
The Prince of Pot was charged with conspiracy to manufacture and distribute marijuana and conspiracy to engage in money laundering. We've reached that comic book nexus, the giant battle between good and evil or David and Goliath. And I see myself obviously as David in the United States drug war and the DEA and their government is the monolith, the Goliath. But you did break the law, didn't you? You were selling seeds illegally in the United States. Yeah, but they're wrong, of course, because punishment is the name of the game, and no one should be punished for marijuana. That's absurd. Uh, why should you be punished for marijuana? No, the president of Molson's Brewery is not punished for all the thousands that die on the highway from alcohol. The only one the DEA said even exists in Canada, I'm the number one drug trafficking kingpin because I sold seeds <coughs> through Canada Post. The DEA is trying to extradite the Prince of Pot so he can stand trial in the United States. He could spend 35 years in an American prison for a crime the Canadian authorities felt wasn't worth prosecuting. No one has ever been jailed for selling seeds in Canada. The Emery case has outraged Canada's cannabis community, raising prickly issues of identity, independence and imperialism. His supporters say it's a political prosecution. People who don't even smoke pot are outraged. And this is an example of the United States trying to, you know, no bitch, we're gonna do it our way, because I don't, you know, I don't like how you have, I don't like how you let the kids smoke pot. Mm -hmm. I don't like how you let the kids smoke pot, you know? The Emory extradition is being run out of Seattle, an office regularly confronted with BC Bud. Now this here, you know, retails in the greater Seattle area for about about three thousand dollars a pound. Three thousand know, dollars for, can, for that amount there. Exactly. And we can see this in New Jersey might be four or five thousand. We can see it as high as six or eight thousand dollars a pound. So there's uh, there's lots of money to be made. The special agent in charge dismisses notions that Mark Emery is an innocent seed seller. Mark Emery managed a, a massive criminal enterprise making millions upon millions of dollars at the expense of our communities and children here in the United States. Is this arrest just a, a political action on behalf of the United States? No, absolutely not. I mean, it's, it is the U.S. government looking at an individual who is breaking United States law. But it should demonstrate to people well, like Mark Emery and to other trafficking organizations that operate that someone might think they're safe in another part of the world and no, one, no one's ever going to get to them at the end of the day, well, they better think twice about that. On the border, the battle continues. Prior, it's like a chess game. Uh, you, make a, you make a move, they make a counter move. Uh, the United States has some formidable weaponry in its armory, but the odds are still stacked against it. The Pacific Northwest is rugged and remote, features the BC bud smugglers used to their advantage. Unless you have intelligence to tell you where and when they're gonna be, uh, it's, it's almost an impossibility the porous border raises serious questions not just about drug running but also illegal immigration and the terrorist threat in some places there isn't even radar coverage in this area in particular helicopters are very uh, very prolific in bringing the, uh, the contraband into the country we quickly find evidence of just how resourceful and well resourced the smugglers are last year they built a tunnel from the curved shed in canada to the house on the other side of the road in the united states it was like something from the Great Escape, 100 metres long, lined with wood, steel and concrete. It was fairly sophisticated. They dug it out pretty uh, deep. This is the shed that goes in from the tunnel house right there. On the ground, the task seems even more daunting. We were taken for a drive along the border. Even though it's lined with cameras and sensors, it's often impossible to tell where one country stops and another begins. We're standing in the United States. This road is boundary road in the U.S. This ditch here represents the national boundary. And then on the other side is Zero Avenue, which is in Canada. BC Bud is now a Canadian cash crop. The profits are so high, the risks so low, the growing, smuggling and smoking will continue. So will the debate. Does marijuana help or hurt? Is America too tough or Canada too lax? Two countries so close together and yet so far apart.